Hello, everybody. Welcome again to Storytime from the Milledgeville Public Library of Illinois. The story we have for you today comes from China, and it is actually from the Han Dynasty, which was quite a long time ago in China. This is the story of the seven brothers. Once long ago, when the great emperor Qin, Shuang, Qin Shi Huang ruled in China, there were seven brothers. They lived together up on a beautiful hillside and each one looked so much like the other. They walked alike, they talked alike, they moved alike. They looked so much alike that it was very difficult to tell them apart. But each one of the brothers had his own special thing. Each one of them had an amazing power that was all his own. First brother had ears that could hear a hundred miles away. He could hear a fly sneeze a hundred miles away. Second brother had eyes that could see very far. He could look a hundred miles away and see that fly sitting on the Great Wall of China, sneezing and feeling very sorry for himself. Now third brother, third brother had great strength. He could walk straight across all of China. And when he came to a mountain, he would just pick it up and walk across and put it back down behind him. That was how strong third brother was. Now fourth brother was strong too, but in a different way. For you see, fourth brother had bones of iron. It did not matter what you did to him. You could throw an entire mountain on fourth brother and you would not break a single one of his bones. Now fifth brother, fifth brother had legs that could grow very quickly as thick and as strong as tree trunks and just as tall. Sixth brother, sixth brother was never too hot. It did not matter how hot it got, even in the middle of the hottest summer, Sixth Brother could keep on working through the hottest part of the day and never get too hot. Now Seventh Brother, he was the youngest and he was the baby in the family and all of his brothers did everything they could to keep Seventh Brother as happy as possible. For Seventh Brother's power was that if he cried, he would cry big, warm, salt tears, each one big enough to drown an entire village. So as you can believe it, none of the brothers wanted seventh brother to cry. Well, they went along living very happily together for quite some time. And then one day, first brother sat up and he said, I hear I hear a moaning and a groaning. It sounds as though it is very far away, probably somewhere near the Great Wall of China. Second brother, will you look and see what is going on? It is quite a loud noise. And so second brother looked and he saw, oh, he said, there is a great enormous hole in the Great Wall of China. And there are a lot of men trying to move rocks and things to fill up the hole and plug it. And they look very tired and very worn out. It looks as though perhaps they are not allowed to eat or sleep until the hole is plugged up. Well, seventh brother was always hungry. And so he felt so sorry for those poor men that his lip began to tremble just a little bit and his brothers recognized that he was about to cry and third brother said do not worry do not worry seventh brother i will go and i will help them fix the wall with my help and my strength it will be done in no time and so third brother started walking across china and he was so strong and he could walk so quickly that he was there in half a minute no time at all and he came in and he looked at what was happening and he began tossing great rocks from one hand to the other and filling up the hole in the great wall. And in, by the time the sun set, the, the hole was all filled and it was fixed. Well, 
normally. When an emperor hears about a very strong man, it's a very good thing, and he comes and asks that man to join his army, or to be on his guard, or to help him somehow. But third brother was a little too strong for Emperor Qin Shi Huang to feel safe. And so he said, this man is too strong. He fixed the whole wall by himself in less than one day. I do not think it is safe to let him live. Hmm, if I am going to capture him, Normally, I would send a whole army for a strong man, but this man is very strong. I will send two armies. And see, he sent two armies. Now, of course, when third brother had finished filling up the wall and fixing it, he was rather tired. And so he had laid down to take a little nap and sleep during the night. And then he would go back to his brothers in the morning. But when he woke up in the morning, Third brother was quite surprised to find himself surrounded by two whole armies. And the general of the army stood forth and he said, The great emperor, whose face is more dazzling than the rising sun, has decreed that you are to be beheaded. Oh dear. Well, third emperor was, or third brother was not very happy to hear that. But the general of the army said, come, take this man back to the royal palace. And so they took him back to the royal palace. But by the time they got there, it was rather late in the day. And so the emperor decided that he would be beheaded in the morning. Well, when third brother was told that, he was so afraid that he began to cry. Back on the hillside where his brothers lived, first brother heard him crying and he said, oh no. I hear third brother crying. Something must have gone wrong. Second brother, look and see what it is. And second brother looked and he saw third brother was crying and he was surrounded by two whole armies and on front of him on the ground was the block where they would put his head in the morning before they chopped it off. He said, oh no, it looks as though they are going to behead third brother in the morning. Well, seventh brother started to look a little sad and fourth brother said, do not worry, do not worry. I will go and I will change places with third brother. And then the celestial emperor whose face is more dazzling than a rising sun, he can try to behead me all he wants for my bones of iron will not break and he will not be able to chop my head off. Perhaps, perhaps if he tries his hardest, that will make him feel better. And so fourth brother set off. And in half a minute, no time at all, he had arrived at the royal palace. And he very quickly tiptoed in between the two sleeping armies. And he switched places with third brother, who had been waiting for him and hoping he would come. And then third brother went home and fourth brother sat down to wait for the morning. Well, when the morning came, the emperor arrived and the armies got ready and they tried to chop off fourth brother's head. But the sword they tried to chop it off with bent and broke. And then they got an ax and that chipped and dinged and then it finally broke. And it did not matter how many times they tried, they could not chop off fourth brother's head. Well, the emperor was getting a little upset by this and the sun was getting low in the sky. And so the emperor said, stop. Clearly we cannot chop off this man's head. So therefore, we shall drown him. In the morning, he will be thrown into the sea. And the emperor went off to bed. Well, fourth brother was a little frightened to hear that for bones of iron may not break, but they will most definitely sink. And so he began to cry. First brother heard him crying and said, oh no, fourth brother is crying. Second brother, see what is wrong. And second brother looked and he could see that they had taken fourth brother down to the seaside and the boats were ready and the sailors were getting ready to go out to sea. And he said, oh no, it looks as though they are going to drown fourth brother in the morning. 
And his seventh brother began to look a little sad. Fifth brother said, do not worry. Do not worry. I will go and I will trade places with fourth brother. And then they may try to drown me as much as they want. And the mighty emperor whose whisper is like the roll of thunder. Perhaps he will be happier if he tries to drown me. I will go. And so he left. And in half a minute, no time at all, fifth brother arrived at the seaside and he tiptoed in between the two sleeping armies and he traded places with fourth brother who had been waiting and hoping that he would come. And then fourth brother went home and fifth brother sat down to wait for the morning. Well, in the morning, the emperor arrived at the seaside and he got onto his great barge. And then they put fifth brother onto one of the boats and they took him out into the deep sea and they threw him overboard. But it was the oddest thing when they threw him overboard, the water only came to his waist, even though it was very, very deep, for fifth brother's legs had grown very, very long as soon as they threw him in the water. Well, they pulled him out of the water again and they went to the deeper ocean and they threw him in again. And this time the water only came up to his chest. Well, the emperor was not happy about this. So they pulled him on the ship again and they took him out to the deepest part of the ocean that they could find and they threw him overboard again. And his legs grew tall and thick like tree trunks. And now the water was up to his neck just below his chin. And he said, ah, how lovely and cool this water is. The emperor is so kind to show me the deepest part of the ocean. Well, the emperor was not happy and he hauled fifth brother back onto the ship and they went back to the shore and he said, in the morning, since water did not work, we will burn this man in the fire. And he went off to his palace to bed. Well, sixth brother, <clears throat> fifth brother sat down and he heard that he was going to be burnt into a fire and he started to cry. And of course, back on the hillside, first brother heard him crying and called for second brother to see what was wrong. And second brother looked and he said, oh, I see that they have taken him away from the seaside and Oh, there is a great pile of wood being built. It looks as though they are about to burn fifth brother in the morning. Oh, seventh brother's lip began to quiver and sixth brother said, do not worry. I will go for it does not matter how hot it gets. It will not be uncomfortable to me. And perhaps, perhaps. If he tries to burn me in the fire, the splendid emperor whose merest glance is like the flash of lightning will be happy and he will not be upset anymore. And so sixth brother went and in half a minute, no time at all, he had arrived at the palace and he tiptoed in between the two sleeping armies and he traded places with fifth brother who had been waiting and hoping he would come. And fifth brother went home and sixth brother sat down to wait for the morning. And when the morning came, the emperor arrived and all of the two armies were running about gathering as much wood as they could find. And they built a great big fire and they put sixth brother in the middle of it. And he sat there and he rubbed his hands together. He washed his, wa rubbed his face and he walked about in the flames and he said, ah, how splendid our noble emperor is who's slightest frown can make the land shake like the earthquake to let me warm myself by his fire. Well, eventually the emperor realized he was not going to be able to burn this man up in the fire. And so he ordered that sixth brother come out of the fire and that in the morning they would shoot him full of arrows. Well, when sixth brother heard that, he began to cry. And first brother heard him from the hilltop and he called the second brother and second brother looked and he said, oh dear, they have taken away the firewood. They are gathering arrows and bows and it looks as though in the morning they are going to shoot sixth brother full of arrows. There is nothing we can do. None of us can stand against that. Perhaps 
Perhaps we should all go together, said all of the brothers. We will all go, yes. We will go and be with Sixth Brother. Since there is nothing that we can do to stop this, at least we can all be together at the end. And the noble emperor whose slightest frown can make the land shake like the earthquake can kill all of us. And perhaps then he will be happier. And so they began to walk down the road. But as they went, Seventh Brother began to think about how he was going to be shot full of arrows. And he really did not like that idea. And he was a little tired and he was hungry too. And he began to cry. And the first drop was as big as the longest river of China, all rolled up into just one drop and as salty as the sea. And the second drop was as big as the second longest river in China, all rolled up into one drop and salty as the sea. And there in front of them rolled an ocean of tears a hundred miles from them all the way over the Great Wall of China and out to the Yellow Sea and back. And the emperor himself was tossed and thrown so far that he is still trying to find his way back to the palace. But with that ocean of water rushing back and forth, Sixth Brother was freed. And so he hurried up the road and First Brother heard him coming and Second Brother saw him coming and they were able to tell Seventh Brother that Sixth Brother was coming and he did not need to cry anymore and so he stopped. And the water all rolled away back down towards the ocean and the Sixth, bro sixth Brother came up the road and this other six brothers came down the road and they were reunited at the Great Wall of China. And then Fifth Brother looked about him and he said, ah, fish! For the waves had come back from the ocean and piled up piles of glistening fishes, flipping and flapping all over the place. And third brother said, I get the wood. And he went and he gathered an entire forest and he set the wood into a pile. And fourth brother said, I can bring the fire. And he snapped his iron thumb and his iron finger together and out jumped a spark which fell into the fire and set it blazing. Oh, I'm so hungry, said Seventh Brother. Now that we're all together again, perhaps we can forget all of our troubles and just have a good meal together. I promise I will never cry again unless I absolutely must. And so all seven of the brothers sat down by the fire and pulled out, got themselves some delicious fish and roasted them over the fire and feasted on the fish. For of course, after such a very trying week, they were very, very hungry. And that is the story of the Seven Brothers, which comes to us from the Han Dynasty in China. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you'll come back and join us again on Wednesday at 3 p.m. Central Time. We will have another story for you from the Milledgeville Public Library of Illinois. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.